friends, Nikki here from Brixen, 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 Brixen Bowler World Cup here in Italy. And uh, I promised you to tell you and show you a little bit about what's going on at a World Cup behind the scenes while setting, while testing, while thinking about the bowler problems. And I cannot do this today because they are still setting finals and semi finals, and I'm not allowed to show you that. But I asked you what you wanted to know about the World Cup and what goes on with the World Cup. So I asked the setters and everyone who's involved to tell me their story, their favorite tunes, and I will just try to answer a few of your questions. So thank you for asking all those questions on Instagram and YouTube. And also thank you to the supporters who made this possible for me to show you what's going on, which is High Five, the distributor here in Austria, Italy, for all these beautiful hold brands, and climbholds.com. They make it possible for me to travel, have a good life, and tell you stories about climbing. That's cool, huh? And as you probably maybe can hear, I'm a little bit sick, which is sad because my brain capacity is at 10%. Everyone who knows me knows that I'm already super stupid and not that smart. But now that I'm a little bit sick, don't expect anything from me. So enjoy. Nikki out. See you soon. Question number uno by Insalate on Instagram. How many different holes and volumes do the setters have? Why and how do they get picked? So the IFSC has an IFSC catalog, which presents like the best brands, or at least the brands who paid the money and who made it into the catalog. And the catalog is divided uh, into three categories, holes, macros, and volumes. So this is already uh, some constraint, you know, like you cannot use like any holes you just like, The setters cannot go uh, to their own gym and just take some of the holes, some of their favorite holes. No, the holes need to be in this catalog and approved by the IFSC. So in general, the whole selection of the holes happens with the distributor. The distributor is high five. Uh, they distribute uh, holes in Austria and Italy, uh, Squadra, Axis, Lapis, Captain Crux, uh, Volume Brands, Expression, I think Cheetah as well, and many of those brands are already in the catalog. So they talked to the chief setter, Marcin, and together they created a list, or High Five proposed the list, Marcin asked for some changes, uh, adding more of this, adding more of this, and together they came up with a list and material worth of 120,000 euros. That's three Teslas, four Teslas. Is it a rocket ship? Is it a rocket trip to moon with Jeff Bezos? I don't know. It's a shit lot of money. I never had and I will never have that much money. 120,000 euros worth of climbing holes material just for one competition. They are able to do this because they work closely together with the brands which produce or sponsor and supply a lot of holes as well. All together with High Five. Here in Brixen we have more than 180 plywood volumes, fiberglass by Squadra, Cheetah, Lapis and Expression, more than 240 fiberglass macros and more than I think 900 or 1000 holes. I just briefly looked at the list and everything they don't have uh, they can still or they just look around in the gym storage and just take whatever they want because functionality is key here at uh, World Cup. What happens with, uh, with all the holes uh, after the competition? They take the holes and kind of spread it over the season. They supply more different competitions which follow up. So the holes, for example, from Cheetah, they go to Chamonix to the Lead World Cup. Uh, then they also sponsor the Rockmasters at Arco, uh, the Block Summer competition in Graz, an outdoor bouldering competition, super cool and also the European Championship in Munich. So all these holes get split between the national distributors and the brands. They organize it all together and then they just like move them across Europe for the IFSC season. 
So that's it. Hi5 knows what's needed for commercial setting, for comp setting. So in agreement with the headsetter, they just propose a lot of holes, a lot of materials, and then they send it here to the venue. We got all the stuff here, and you will see it all on the wall uh, on the weekend. And then after the weekend, you will see how this stuff got onto the wall in my behind the scenes videos I'm only to share after the competition. I hope I answered your question. Uh, if not, I don't know. <laughs> question number two by K Swenningen on Instagram. Style selection of climbs pre-setting work. I think what you mean is how do they select the styles? Is it pre-setting or is it just they put anything on the wall and then they compile it? They kind of compose around before they start the setting but it's not like okay this needs to be v7 uh, four moves uh, only blue holes no uh, you cannot put too many constraints on the setting team so it's more rough like hmm, power and uh, then i see another one which is called no hands so tsukuku for example is trying to set a bowler right now over there no he's just lying there staring at the wall that's what they do most of the time just like visualize visualize but no like those are the styles a little bit uh, so they try to compose together like a style a stylish round which has a lot of which covers a lot of characters uh, try to keep in mind uh, sometimes the style changes before a zone and after a zone and uh, they also have to adapt to the holes and also adapt to the wall angles because not every wall has all the different types of all the angles. Uh, this wall here, for example, has two slabs, one on the left side, one on the right side, but like like an L, you know, like this is like the the big big wall where they can put like semis and finals on because of the camera work, but the side panels which have the slab are not fitting for uh, the cameras. I don't want to spoil too much, so uh, let's see whether they are able, whether they want to at all set like slap style boulder problems in semis and finals. I already forgot it anyway. So they select the styles pre-setting. JJK Bouldering asked how you test problems, how much you check for cheats. It's really hard to put a number on it, but they test a long time. Let's put it this way, I was filming yesterday all day long. I was filming at least like five hours of footage and they were testing a lot and a lot. You will see it in the next episode when they are testing, when they are tweaking, when they are climbing. It's a lot. They also test and tweak in groups, so uh, which is cool because uh, there's a setting team and it's not a tweaking team, a testing team, but it's like other people who were not involved in setting or testing it on their first in the first round. Uh, they came later and tested it later, so they had a fresh mind, a fresh view, and uh, so a lot of time they don't try always to break the beta of like on purpose, but they're super experienced. So a lot of people are like, "Oh, I think I would do it this way. Uh, if you're taller, you could do it this way." Then they try to break it and to see is it possible. Uh, but they don't have a beta breaking team in here. It's more or less like the experience. And a lot of people ask me, "How can it happen?" that sometimes the beta gets broken because they are not all-knowing gods you know they are not mr manhattan setting bowler problems sometimes you are like too much involved in a bowler problem or sometimes there's too much stress too much too much time pressure so they're trying to do their best and you will see in the behind the scenes setting episodes that they tested everything properly but they saved some changes, some possible changes for the semi-finals or the final rounds, you know? So there are some things you could do, tweak some holes, or change some angles, um, but they will do this according to the qualification. You will see this, Martin talked about this a lot, and uh, I think that's pretty cool to see how the bowler problems evolved and what they are going to do with it, because I'm excited as well, like whether they will turn some problems into this direction or into this direction. Uh, yeah, it's condition dependent. Tomorrow, for example, everything is supposed to, to rain like all day long, so let's see. Aufmupfel asked on Instagram, what are the requirements for setting routes in a World Cup? 
So there are no uh, screwdriver licenses, no letter licenses. Uh, the only licenses there are right now are FSC license, international oh, yeah. license. There's a whole topic how to get an IF IFSC license. Uh, they are trying to change the system right now to make it more fair, more diverse, everything. Um, we have three IFSC setters here. Martin, who's uh, the chief. Then we got Mathieu from France and uh, Tsukuru Hori, former uh, Japanese World Cup winner uh, from Japan. The host country, Italy, in this case, supported and provided three setters on top of it. Mathieu brought a friend from uh, France as well. And uh, then there's another setter number eight, uh, Hannes from uh, the head setter from this gym here. Yeah, that's how the crew gets together in this place. Sometimes it's more setters, sometimes it's less setters, but it's like a mix of IFSC setters, home host country setters. And they ha usually have a lot of experience as well, working with the national teams, uh, hosting training camps and going to other countries, setting training camps and stuff like this. Maya asked on YouTube, do you ever get into arguments about a particular boulder where one person thinks it's great and another hates it? Haven't seen this happening here at this World Cup, but I've experienced it myself at competition. Can happen. Communication is key, and they're really good at uh, communicating here. So let's see whether you can find any disagreements in the videos which will follow up. Okay, I gotta ask the setters for a few things. So they are really busy now, so I will do this in another episode which I will post tomorrow. So I hope I answered some of your questions already. Stay tuned. If you have more questions, post them here. Nikki out. Bye bye. Love you. <laughs>